What I'd like to do next is talk about what we're going to actually infer, what we're going to actually try to learn after running a simple linear regression. In order to do that, I first want to think back to how we thought about uh, one sample t-tests and what we did in that simpler context. So the idea we had with one sample t-tests was that we could take advantage of the central limit theorem to say that our estimate of the mean, x bar, will follow a normal distribution centered at the true population mean with variance sigma squared over n. So this is the statement of the central limit theorem that we used. Then what did we do with this? Well, we pointed out that you could take x bar minus mu and divide by the square root of sigma squared over n, and that should follow a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. Okay. And we also said that if we substitute an s for the sigma, if we have x bar minus mu divided by the square root of s squared over n, that should follow a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we used this for a hypothesis test, right? We said, let's calculate this test statistic and compare it to this distribution in order to get a p-value. The other thing we did was we created confidence intervals. So we said, all right, let's take x bar plus or minus the cutoff from the t-distribution, which is approximately equal to 2, times square root of s squared over n, with the idea that the probability that this interval, and I'll just do it in words, includes mu is equal to 0.95. The probability that mu is within this range should be approximately 0.95. This is what we did in the context of a one sample t-test. And I'm running this down here so that we can make it parallel to what we're going to try to do to learn from a simple linear regression. Remember that the idea here is that if we were to do a simulation, if we really had a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, and we sampled from that and wrote down x bar, and we did that sampling and that writing down of x bar repeatedly 10,000 times, the histogram we'd end up with would look normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. So we're going to make a parallel statement now about the regression coefficients. Unlike in the simple one sample t test, where we're sampling values from one normal distribution, in the simple regression context, we have to think about sampling values from some true regression model. So the idea is there's some true value of beta 0, some true intercept. There's some true value that the mean of y goes up by when x goes up by 1. There's some true slope. And the way we're going to sample is we're going to pick some x's, not even randomly. It doesn't have to be random. We're going to arbitrarily pick some x's, and for each value of x, we'll find the point on the line, and that represents the mean of y given that x, and then we're going to draw from a normal distribution centered at that point on the line, centered that, at that mean of y, with variance that we'll call sigma squared. The way to do this with some software to do the simulation is to pick the x's, and then take those x's, plug them into the line, so beta 0 plus beta 1 x, and then add some normal error. Add some error uh, from a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. And we have to pick beta 0, beta 1, and sigma squared. And then what we end up with is a data set that contains a bunch of x's, which are arbitrarily chosen, and y values that were sampled from normal distributions centered at the line given x. The idea is that just like I can repeatedly sample from a normal distribution in the one sample t-test context, I can repeatedly sample values of y that go along with this line. So if this is the true line, and these are the x's I've chosen, one sample might look like this. And let me erase this so it's easier to see. If this is the true line, and these are the x's I've chosen, one particular sample of y's might look like this. Right? And I could try to fit a line to those data points. And it would be similar, but not exactly equal to this true line that I've drawn. If I do it again, if I again pick the same x's and sample y's by taking the line and adding or subtracting some normal error, 
I will get a slightly different data set. And if I take that data set and estimate the intercept and slope, I'll again get a line that'll be a little bit different from the true line. So just like in the simple one sample t-test context, we were talking about sampling from a normal distribution and then writing down x bar, now we're talking about sampling values that are a little bit above or below this line, y values that go along with x's, and repeatedly estimating the intercept and slope that we would obtain. And the idea is just like x bar will be a little bit different for each sample that we can obtain, beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat can be a little bit different for each sample that we could obtain. And in fact, it turns out that if we were to do this simulation, both of them would follow a normal distribution. So the set of 1,000 slope estimates that I could generate from 1,000 different samples would follow a normal distribution. The set of 1,000 different intercept estimates that I could generate from 1,000 different samples would follow a normal distribution, and each of these would follow a normal distribution centered around the corresponding true value, the true intercept, or the true slope. Because each of these quantities is unbiased, which is exactly uh, means what I just said, that on average it would be equal to the truth. Okay, And each of these would be normal with some particular variance that I'm not going to write down yet. Some particular variance. So I can go through this process for the beta 0 hat, and I can go through this process for the beta 1 hat. Because we're more interested in the slope, let me erase this to give myself room and focus on the slope. Although we could do the same thing for the intercept. So I've got beta hat 1. If we repeatedly sample data from the true line, this will follow a normal distribution centered at the true slope with a particular variance. What is that variance going to be? Turns out that variance is going to be sigma squared times 1 over the sum of square differences in x. So before we talk about this quantity too much, I want you to just see what we have here, see what this says. This says that if we repeatedly sample from the population, sample y's from this line, and estimate slopes for each data set, the average, the mean of those slopes will be equal to the true slope that we chose by simulation. On average, our slope estimate is equal to the truth. And that set of slopes will follow a normal distribution that has some particular variance. And this is the expression for the variance. Okay. So this should exactly parallel what we have here, where the x bars follow a normal distribution with mean equal to the true mean and some particular variance. This is also true by the central limit theorem. This is true by the central limit theorem. And I want you to note the parallels and how these variances look. So what is this variance quantity? How much do we expect our slope estimate uh, to deviate from the true slope? Well, it depends on sigma squared. It depends on the residual variance. It depends on how far the values are on average from the line. Just like the variance of x bar depends on how much the values in the population deviate from the mean in that population. The bigger sigma squared, the bigger the residual variance, the more we'd expect our estimate of the slope to vary. And that makes sense because I'd expect my estimate of the slope to be better if the points are very close to the line than if the points are really very far from the line. I'm less likely to get a slope estimate that's close to the truth. What about this denominator? Well, first of all, note that this is the sum of the square distances from the mean for each value of x. The more data points I have, the bigger this quantity will be. Just like this value here, the more data points I have, the bigger this denominator will be. The more data I have, the bigger I expect this denominator to be. In other words, the smaller the entire variance will be. The more data points I have, the closer my estimate of the slope will be to the true slope. If I just have a couple data points, my slope estimate might be off. But if I have a lot of data points, I'm going to do a much better job estimating the slope. And you see that in this expression because this denominator will be bigger, and so this entire quantity for the variance will be smaller. What else? This quantity here reflects how spread out the x's are. So what this says is the more spread out the x's are, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the entire quantity. If I'm trying to estimate the slope, but I only have points for a couple values of x, it's going to be kind of hard to estimate that slope. 
But if I have data points for a big variety of values of x, really spread out x's, I'm going to get a better estimate of the slope. And that's what this quantity here reflects. The bigger the square distances of x from the mean of x, the bigger this denominator, the smaller the entire variance. In other words, the less my estimates of the slope vary from the true slope. So that's the intuition for this quantity. Now what we can do is see that we can use this statement to parallel the corresponding statement that we made about x bar in the one sample t-test context. <laughs>